Great. All right. Well, good morning, and thank you, everyone, for being here. We're here to, sh to uh, share some really exciting news about affordable housing. As folks know, this is the top priority for our administration and something that the Lieutenant Governor and I have long talked about and have really been leaning into with the incredible leadership and support of our new Housing and Livable Communities Secretariat led by our Secretary Ed Augustus, our Deputy Secretary Jennifer Maddox, and so many from the wonderful team at the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. We do this in partnership, including in partnership with outstanding community leaders like Salida Miranda and the Hyde Square Task Force. So good morning to you all. And we do this, of course, uh, with developers. Charlie Adams from Penrose is here, and you'll hear from him, from him in just a little bit. You know, one of the things that we were able to do this year, we were able to do a couple things this year. One was the budget, and one was the tax package. And one of the things that's really important about the tax package is the kinds of incentives we gave to developers that make all of this work, including the development that we're talking about, or that we're here to, uh, to celebrate today. And uh, because of that, I want to thank our legislative partners, Senator Liz Miranda, Rep. Sam Montano, and Representative uh, Garcia, who's over here as well. So uh, we really, we really, really appreciate their support. We also appreciate the support of Crystal Cornegay of the Mass of Mass Housing for her for her leadership. And we thank all of our local officials, including Mayor Ballantyne from uh, Somerville and Mayor uh, Pangalo from Salem, who are here with us today. Uh, we also appreciate Sheila Dillon from the city of Boston, who is here. Lowering housing costs is our top priority. Today, we will take a step that will make an affordable home a reality for thousands more people in our state. Today, we're awarding nearly $140 million in addition to $100 million in state and federal tax credits to support more than 1,900 rental homes in 26 developments across 19 communities throughout Massachusetts. Now, more than 90% of these homes will be income-restricted affordable units, and all of them will provide a really good quality of life in communities. These are in locations from Springfield to Holyoke, out to South Hadley, down to Brockton, up to Lynn, all the way to Oak Bluffs and Wellfleet. So really, <laughs> all, all across this state. And that includes right here at the Blessed Sacrament in Jamaica Plain, where a historic church will find a new life in homes that reflect the inclusive values of this neighborhood. Like Blessed Sacrament, each of these 26 developments is thoughtful, creative, and rooted in community. And each unit will provide someone, a senior, a family, a working person, with the comfort of home and the peace of mind that comes with financial security. These homes will also stand as a testament to the impact we can have when we take action as partners in government. This time last year, we would not have been able to fund this many affordable homes. We would not have been able to issue awards for every strong application that came in. But last year, we got together, we said we were gonna do this, and together, our administration and the legislature made it happen. We enacted tax cuts to help everyone save money. Families in Massachusetts now have the most generous child and dependent tax credit in the entire country. Seniors got a housing credit. Seniors got a housing credit, doubling what it was before. Now it's $2,400. They'll see the benefit of that this spring, money back in their pocket. And our tax package, as I alluded to, did something as well. We increased funding for LIHTC, our low-income housing tax credit, by 50% 
from $40 million to $60 million annually. And these affordable developments are a prime example of why we did that. Because of that step, we were able to fund every single project that applied this year. And because of that, and because of that, more families, more seniors, more working people will find home in Massachusetts and be able to live in a place that they can afford. So that's what this is about. That is why we are um, setting these goals. That's why we're working hard every day to meet them. It's why we appointed the state's first ever Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities with a fantastic team. It's why we've increased funding uh, to support these efforts. It's why, as well, we supported and proposed the $4 billion Affordable Homes Act earlier this year. The most, the most, The Affordable Homes Act, the most ambitious housing plan in Massachusetts history. We are going to work together and get that done. So let's celebrate the affordable homes we create today, and let's go out and create thousands more so that everyone in Massachusetts can find an affordable place to live. Amen. And now, and now I'd like to bring to the podium our fantastic Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, who together with Deputy Secretary Maddox and the entire team has been out there hustling all around the state in a lot of meetings and a lot of conversations and coming forward with concrete action, things we can do and are doing to make sure we are doing everything we can to increase housing opportunity around the state. Secretary Augustus. Well, thank you, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for your leadership to make Massachusetts more affordable and competitive and equitable. I also want to acknowledge our legislators who are great uh, partners in this effort, and particularly the legislators who are here today who are really strong supporters of the Affordable Homes Act. And I look out, uh, and I know many of you probably came literally from the hearing right here. Um, <clears throat> 11 hours uh, of uh, testimony, uh, but it shows the amount of support uh, and the urgency of our mission in getting that uh, legislation turned into law. I also want to thank the High uh, Square Task Force for hosting us. When the governor created the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, she gave us a clear mandate, build more homes faster and lower housing costs. And I'm proud to say today is a clear example that we are achieving that mission. Communities from Boston to Athol to Wellfleet are receiving funding for affordable housing production today. One thing all these communities have in common is the dire need for more housing, and more housing that everyone can afford. The Healy Driscoll team is working to strengthen the tools in our toolbox to expand affordable housing for working families, powerful tools like the low-income housing tax credit. Last fall, as the governor mentioned, she signed into law that historic tax relief bill. In addition to putting money back in the pockets of Massachusetts taxpayers, it increases the state's low-income housing tax credit to $60 million per year, a $20 million increase. Today, we celebrate exactly what those tax credits do, building or preserving more than 1,900 new homes. That means more housing for our workers, that means more good jobs, that means stronger communities, and even more economic prosperity. This is housing our communities desperately need. 92% of those homes will be affordable. And of those homes, affordable homes, 25% are being built for extremely low income residents and those transitioning from homelessness. Right across the street, these funds will be used to redevelop Blessed Sacrament Church into 55 affordable rental units, including multi-purpose community space. This project is a per perfect example of how we in Massachusetts solve tough problems like our housing crisis. We do it together, state, city, developer, and community. 
And I want to thank Penrose, the Hyde Square Task Force, and the City of Boston for getting this done with us. I also want to tell you a little bit more about two supportive housing projects that are specifically designed to serve our vulnerable neighbors. In Lynn, two life communities. <laughs> Solomine House Project will create 150 affordable apartments for seniors. Through a unique partnership with a nonprofit healthcare organization called Element Care PACE, these residents will al also have access to comprehensive and coordinated healthcare services right at home. The integrated housing and healthcare approach will allow our seniors to remain at home with the care and dignity they deserve. Similarly, a now vacant I wish we could get you more enthused. Um, similarly, a now vacant hotel in Boston will be transformed into 99 single room apartments for chronically homeless individuals. The 900 Morrissey Boulevard project proposed by the community builders and Pine Street Inn will provide extensive services, care coordination, and independent living skills training, all critical to helping these residents get back on their feet. Supportive housing does more than provide a roof over someone's head. It provides them with essential wraparound services that help build a safe, stable future. And it is our best weapon in our battle against chronic homelessness. These two projects and the 24 others we celebrate today are all fantastic. We need resources to do even more. That's why we need the Affordable Homes Act, the cornerstone of the governor's housing policy, the bill includes, as you heard, $4.1 billion in spending authorizations and 28 policy changes that will supercharge housing production and make it easier for families to find affordable places to live. The Affordable Homes Act is ambitious, it's innovative, it's smart, but most of all, it meets the moment of this housing crisis. We project it would create or preserve nearly 70,000 units of housing that otherwise wouldn't be built. Last week in our State of the Commonwealth Address, the governor said we need to go big when solving our housing challenges. The projects we celebrate today show Massachusetts is full of big ideas and bright solutions. And together we can make Massachusetts a place where everyone can afford to live. Before I wrap up and turn it over to our next speaker, I do want to just uh, give a big shout out uh, to somebody who's been an indispensable partner to me in this new role and really is responsible for vetting and putting all of these projects together uh, from the HLC point of view, uh, Kate Racer and her team and all that. And now I'd like to turn it over to Selena Miranda, the Executive Director of the Hyde Square Task Force, to say a few words. Good morning, buenos dias. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Secretary Augustus, and thank you to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for being here today and for your leadership. On behalf of Hyde Square Task Force, our Board of Directors, and Boston's Latin Quarter, I am thrilled to welcome you here this morning. As you heard, my name is Selena Miranda, and I have the great privilege of leading Hyde Square Task Force. At HSDF, we focus on amplifying the power, creativity, and voices of youth, connecting them to Afro-Latin culture and heritage so they can create a diverse, vibrant Latin Quarter and build a just, equitable Boston. We also serve as the managers of Boston's Latin Quarter, a designated cultural district of the Commonwealth. So if anybody asks today, where did you spend your morning, you were in Boston's Latin Quarter. <laughs> 10 years ago, Hyde Square Task Force purchased the Blessed Sacrament Church with a desire to maintain this historic building as a community resource in our neighborhood. 
We set out with this grand idea of creating an arts and cultural center, but soon realized that the project would require more than what we could do on our own. Thanks to many supporters, including the city of Boston, we found an outstanding partner to help us realize our vision for this amazing building. Hyde Square Task Force and Penrose are partnering on this ambitious project. The project is a win-win for our community and our organization. As you very well know and have heard today, affordable housing continues to be a challenge, not only for Boston, but for our entire state. The, pro the project, as you heard, will add 55 units of affordable housing to our neighborhood, making it possible for more folks who call this place home to stay and enjoy all the cultural richness and vibrancy this neighbor has to, neighborhood has to offer. In addition, the redevelopment includes a performance space that will be managed by Hyde Square Task Force. You are right now in what we make our performance space all the time, but it's not ideal. This will allow the youth we serve and the many artists we collaborate with each year to have a place to share their creativity, talent, and love of the arts. We look forward to hosting many community and performance, performance events, allowing us to fulfill HSDF's mission and that of Boston's Latin Quarter. We are excited to have this beautiful building preserved for future generations to enjoy. We are deeply grateful to the Commonwealth and the City of Boston for their support and for their commitment to creating more opportunities for families and individuals to stay in our communities by making affordable housing a priority. Thank you so much to Senator Miranda and State Rep uh, Montaño and Garcia for being here today and your leadership. It is now my great pleasure to welcome to uh, welcome our partner and Penrose's Regional Vice President, Charlie Adams, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are honored to be entrusted with this uh, incredible asset by the Hyde Square Task Force. It is truly an honor uh, for us to, to be able to work with this uh, incredible resource for the community and, uh, and to work with them and to complete the great work on this campus that has already been done by so many folks, including the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation. I think historic assets are really important for affordable housing opportunities. They are landmarks for the communities, there are many memories from generations. They are symbols for the community, and they create a real sense of community. And they often exist for 100 years and for multiple generations. And many times, they exceed their, uh, their life full purpose, their use. So it's always exciting and a great opportunity when, the, when, they, when, when they no longer can serve their original purpose that they could be converted to something else. And so we are particularly excited to be able to transform this beautiful asset, this historic asset for the community, into a new generation for, of years to come, for generations have come to enjoy, both as housing and as for performance space. So we're very excited about that, so thank you. On behalf of all my colleagues in the room, I wanna thank uh, the, the state and the Commonwealth for their incredible support for affordable housing. Um, I've worked in lots of states, and there is not a single other state in the entire country that has a house, housing delivery system as, as strong, as well, and as committed as the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have HLC, Mass Housing, Mass Development, Mass Housing Partnership, and CDAC, among many uh, partners to thank for that delivery system, so thank you very much. And so I want to thank the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary, the deputy, and of course Kate Racer for all the hard work uh, that people have done today to, date to bring this together. And we're very excited about this opportunity and for all the work that will be, will be delivered in this room today. So thank you. And with that, I'd like to turn it back to the governor. Thank you. Well, Thank you so much uh, to, uh, to Selena and to Charlie in particular for uh, your comments and to all of you um, in the room for the work. So many of you, I see so many advocates, I see many, so many people involved in this space. Thank you so much for, um, for everything that, that you do and we're counting on you now in, in, as we move forward. Uh, before questions though, I wanted to invite Secretary Augustus to, to come up with me and Lieutenant Governor. 
Um, I have one more announcement. As Secretary Augustus mentioned, Kate Racer is here in the building, and we wanted to announce today at this event that she's been promoted to Undersecretary for Housing Development. <laughs> Well deserved. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. 